and we we decided to make the move make it happen and so here we are and you can see why one of the main reasons why we moved down is because of this coastline So, here I am in Lagos, in the Algarve. I figured I'd do a, a one-year update. I kind of give you guys uh, details on what's been going on over our year in Portugal. And you know, kind of what's on the forefront. So, I guess first and foremost, we hit our one-year anniversary roughly around September and I'll just say that I'm so happy <laughs> that we got out when we did from the US especially based off of this recent 2024 president election I mean I kind of had the foresight to know that it was a very very good possibility that Trump could win again which he did and for me, it was more so the reason that no one kind of buried him throughout the the presidential, I guess, Republican nomination. And he was always at the forefront for the Republican Party. So with that being in mind, I knew it was a done deal that he would make the nomination. And then after that, he virtually be, virtually be unbeatable, which proved to be the case. So, kind of part of that, I don't want to ramble too much, but um, if you hear me kind of huffing and puffing, it's because I've taken a 10,000 step challenge, a daily channel, uh, 10,000 step daily challenge to try to lose some of this uh, belly fat. I keep, I keep seeing YouTube videos and articles on, hey, this is the best way to lose that belly fat. You gotta walk 10,000 steps a day. So I figured, hell, I tried. But anyway, I digress. Back to the one year update. So, we moved to Portugal one year ago, officially in the September, and uh, we ended up landing in, in Caldas de Reina. And it was kind of our second choice. Our first choice was actually here in Lagos. And we unfortunately couldn't get a, a spot for our, my daughter in school. And um, she was two at the time and there are long, long waiting lists for schools here in the Lagos and hell, pretty much all of the Algarve, but mostly Lagos. It's very difficult to get a spot. And we also had difficulty finding rentals as well. So that was a bit of a pain in the ass. And it's still difficult to find rentals. So if you're looking at places down here, especially in Lagos area, good luck. It actually sucks. But beyond that, just say that we, we've we spent our time in San Martino de Porto because uh, during my exploratory visit to Portugal back in 2022, it was one of my favorite spots. I was kind of tossing up between Lagos and San Martín de Porto and couldn't really make a decision on which one I preferred, but they both had their pros and cons, but it seemed to be a really charming fishing village right outside of Cádiz de Reina and really enjoyed it. 
So we ended up moving there because I did not like Caldish aesthetically. I said that. Uh, I did not like Caldish aesthetically and I didn't want to live there. And uh, so we ended up moving about 15 minute drive, a little bit longer, maybe 16, 17 minute drive away from Caldish. And yeah, that was an experience all in his own. But needless to say, but needless to say, uh, we were there for a year. Got both kids enrolled in the same the, little, uh, the same school. It was a private school in Calais Serena, and it was, the school was wonderful. Um, we absolutely loved it. Uh, it. wasn't too expensive like some of the schools down here in the Argoff, or just private schools in general. And it, it was it was quite nice. Beyond that, um, we had a a great time, especially meeting new people. There's a, a really good expat community and Cal de Serena. And I think it was, it was the right decision, especially because it was our first time kind of leaving the U.S. and kind of figuring things out. So I think it was a, a good transition spot to kind of get, get there. And then beyond that, I won't go into too, too many details, but we, we, we couldn't hack it there in short, in summary, the weather there during the winter, well, hell, not even the winter, the fall and winter was a little too cold for us. And you know, people like different things and I have a uh, subtropic blood. <laughs> and I like to be very warm so it was a bit of an issue so virtually from October to May it was cold and rainy low 60s high 50s which I like to be in the 70s mid 70s low 80s that's my ideal temperature and it was just it was just too cold and the houses there especially in San Martín de Porto, aren't insulated enough to to warrant living there year-round. It was just too cold. And we were constantly running dehumidifiers because the, the moisture was just permeating the air because of all the the fog that kind of rose through the area, the constant rain and etc. So it was it was just a bit of a pain. Oh, a moment of pausing. I want to show you guys where I'm at. I'm actually on the trail from uh, from Lagos to Prada Luz. But let me turn this around here. So you guys can see. It's absolutely amazing. People back there parasailing in the background over by Portimos. But this is a a nice calming chill spot. All right, back to the hike. Okay, so where was I? Cal de Serena. So we we're in San Martín de Porto. Absolutely love the charmingness of it and the ideal of it however did not like how dead it was in the winter i mean it was super super dead to the point where we felt isolated and we wish we actually stayed closer to caldish maybe in like natadoro which we we didn't like either it was a kind of weird spot we actually stayed there during the summer while we were looking for long-term rentals in the Cal Serena area. And needless to say, it was muggy, I guess because it's right by the lagoon, the Obidos Lagoon. It was muggy, mosquitoes, a lot of moisture. It, it, just, it just wasn't ideal. And the housing in that area is it, not fun. Not fun at all. It's, it's just not built to to modern standards, majority of the older houses. It's just too much moisture. So anyway, uh, this is like a chill spot. I think I'll try to get up here and, and uh, take some drone flights. 
So we tried to oh. So we, we tried to enjoy our time in San Martin de Porto. It didn't work out. We we had lovely neighbors. The Portuguese people in that region are absolutely amazing. And wow, it was it was a good experience from that standpoint and we actually, like I said, actually enjoyed our time there. We couldn't, ultimately, it wasn't for us. It may be for you. <laughs> I just posted a video on that of why it could be a good spot for you, but ultimately it wasn't for our family. And during the winter, <laughs> to escape the cold and rain, we kept driving down to Lagos. And I mean, we came down here maybe three or four times just to kind of escape and get some warmer weather and we absolutely enjoyed it. We, we loved it so much to the point where we wanted to find a way to move down here. And we we found a, a school eventually, and we, we just grabbed it. We, we grabbed the spots opening in the school, and we, we decided to make the move, make it happen. And so here we are, and you can see why, one of the main reasons why we moved down is because of this coastline. Just absolutely gorgeous. I'm being a little daring today. Uh, usually I'm a bit of a chicken when it comes to this stuff. But uh, yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. So, back to what I was saying. We we made it to Lagos. Yeah, it was, I, I've been happy ever since. Yeah, there's some things that we're learning about Lagos that we, we didn't know just because we weren't here during the spring. Uh, and we weren't here during the winter for the most part, except driving down to escape the, the rainy and cold conditions of the Caldas the rain and the Silver Coast. But overall, we absolutely love it here. And I could see myself living here for a very long time. I would have to say that it's a bit of an adjustment. It's definitely more expensive than where we were in the Silver Coast, but I wouldn't have it any other way. It's just, to me, it's a, a magical place that, unfortunately, starting to get a bit crowded, <laughs> uh, and things are getting kind of pricey, because I think everyone is finding this spot and, and enjoying it. And you know, of course, with that, just like in Hawaii, when everyone starts loving loving it, people start dumping more money in it, buying houses, etc., driving the prices up, and then it becomes unaffordable for most people and especially the Portuguese people. So, you know, that's definitely something to consider if you considering moving down to the Algarve and, you know, maybe checking out Lagos. But anyway, uh, that's a brief update of our one year, I guess, life in Portugal. And I kind of go into details in a future video of what was the move like moving from, from one part of Portugal to the other, the cost because uh, it was a, uh, a bit more expensive than I would have liked, but you know, that's something to, something to think about. And um, especially when you think that everything in Portugal must be cheap, it wasn't that cheap. But anyway, that's one year update. Um, if you guys have any questions about the Silver Coast or living in Lagos, because we've been here since June virtually, let me know and we found great restaurants we we know all the local schools if you have children and you're considering either place you know we we have a lot of the details because we've done so much research roughly two years prior to moving to portugal and since we've been here because we've been always being flexible and keeping our options open all right you guys take care peace